coming up August the 2nd. It is a, a big day, the grand opening of the NRA National Sporting Arms Museum at the Bass Pro Shops in Springfield, Missouri. And join us to talk about it, Jim Sapika from the NRA National Firearms Museum. Jim, thank you for your time, sir. Eric, I'm delighted to be here, and I'm here in Springfield, Missouri at the Bass Pro having more fun than you can imagine. Well, we're glad that uh, you're with us. Actually, we don't let Eric talk too much during the show. Uh, so okay. This is, this is Cam. Uh, it, oh, it, Cam, I'm sorry. That's all right, Eric, I, and I apologize. We probably should let you talk more during the show. but. Uh. <laughs> Uh, tell us, so, so, so you're down in uh, Springfield, Missouri, getting ready for this, and this is a big deal because, uh, you know, as long as I've known you and, and Phil Schreier, the, the NRA National Firearms Museum uh, has been, uh, they've done a very good job. You guys have, have gone out to various events, uh, whether it's the national matches at Camp Perry or the, uh, the National Firearms Museum will go out to the National Police Union Championships or the Bianchi Cup. You've done a, you know, the, the museum has always done a very good job of not just being centered in Fairfax, but but going around the country, uh, but to the best of my knowledge, Jim, this marks the first time that you're going to have a, a permanent exhibit outside of Fairfax, Virginia. Well, this is we have done permanent exhibits elsewhere. We do have a nice little mini museum out at Founders Ranch for the Single Action Shooting Society. But this is the first time in NRA's history that there has been a second major NRA firearms museum and this, uh, this museum is in every way a peer institution to the one at the NRA headquarters in Fairfax, Virginia. Uh, it's uh, beautifully built, spectacular attention to the detail, and uh, just incredible guns here. We brought in guns that we've never been able to exhibit before. Uh, we brought in loans from a number of very prestigious collections uh, that will be on display for the first time uh, anywhere. And it's uh, it's going to be an outstanding museum from the from the day it opens, August second. Well, and listen, I mean that that's high praise when you talk about this being comparable to the uh, NRA National Firearms Museum because uh, I've had the privilege of spending hours uh, upon hours at that facility, and it really is amazing. So uh, when when you make that comparison, I know that folks who who head to Springfield, Missouri, to the NRA National Sporting Arms Museum are going to be in for a real treat. Uh, what are some of the, 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 the guns that uh, you're most excited about uh, being on display there in Springfield, Jim? Boy, it's hard to limit it. You know that it is the Sporting Arms Museum, so we start out with a timeline of sporting arms in America, and that starts from the earliest guns that the first uh, colonists and explorers and conquistadors brought over, the match locks, the... Uh, uh, wheel locks, the flint locks, and goes up through the uh, the early pre-colonial or the uh, pre-United States era through the uh, early years of the country, and that's a 150-foot timeline of uh, uh, firearms, sporting firearms from uh, 1600 right up to the current day. So that is a spectacular exhibit in and of itself. There are five dioramas throughout that uh, that. Uh, timeline of sporting arms. There's uh, uh, Lewis and Clark, uh, Buffalo Hunter, uh, uh, kind of a 1950s hunting cabin. Uh, so that's just a spectacular entry exhibit right there. And then uh, we go into a number of individual collections that we're able to show for the, for the first time, really. The one I'm probably most, sad, most excited about is the Remington Factory Collection. Now, these, uh, these are guns that have never been seen outside of the Remington factory in Ilion, New York, and they lent us about 80 guns and about 20 original oil paintings. These are those great uh, hunting and, and sporting scenes that they used in advertising in the 20th century, very, uh, the early 20th century, very iconic images and uh, just great stuff. We've got pro Remington prototypes of guns that were never produced. We've got the first production model. We've got the uh, we've got the first uh, Remington model 870 here, uh, and we've got the uh, uh, the 10 million model 870 here. So uh, uh, there's a wonderful, wonderful wall just filled with spectacular Remington uh, Remington sporting arms. Man, that is, that that is so exciting, uh, and I and I know that the people there uh, in Springfield, Missouri, and the uh, folks at Bass Pro are, have, have just got to be thrilled about the uh, event now coming up what less than two weeks from the grand opening we're coming right up on it it's uh, uh friday august the second that's a week from this coming friday and uh I'll be wide open to the public uh, uh starting at 8 a.m all right no well charge and open uh, open uh, store hours every day of the week 
Well, listen, we're going to be sending uh, our own John Pop and Cameron Gray from uh, NRA News down to cover the big grand opening. But, Jim, I uh, wish you all the very best. I know you're going to be putting in a lot of long hours between now and August 2nd. Uh, it's all fun, and, uh, yeah, I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, we appreciate you taking a couple minutes out of your day to uh, chat with us. And, uh, again, congratulations on everything. Look forward to talking again soon. I look forward to it. Thanks, Cam.